Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Saifi Selogi Academy, Dopa for short. This is the place where we make learning of physiology easy, exciting, and effective. Thank you for joining me. And if you're new to this channel, you're especially welcome. And if you like the content that we share, kindly click the like button. Also click the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on notifications so that you don't get to miss any new content that we drop. All right? So let's get right into today's lecture, digestion and absorption of nutrients. And in this one, proteins. There's a part two. So proteins, very, very, very most important nutrients. That you can ever think of. Why? Because one of the underlying principles of, in physiology, general underlying principle, is that proteins are the structural and functional molecules in the cell, in the animal cell. Okay? So, when you talk about sources of protein, you're always talking about animal, animal, because they are whole. The structure of their whole body, the substance of their body, everything is made up of protein. Okay? So you have fish, you have meat, different kinds of meat, chicken, beef, pork, and so on. Okay? The meat. And you also have what? Egg. And finally, milk. These sources, these are proteinous from animal, okay? So the protein that come from plants, yeah. Just minor, when you say, oh, this is a proteinous meal. If it's from plant, probably 20% is protein. The remaining it is still carbohydrate, okay? The, the dietitians know more about that or the nutritionists. So proteins are very, very vital, very vital. So from the previous, Part one, we talked about the basic from, uh, mechanism of digestion and absorption. So the same thing applies to protein. Now, they are broken down by enzymes through the process of hydrolysis. So it's now to know which enzyme is breaking down which substrate and in which location to yield which byproduct or breakdown product. That's just it, okay? So now, when you take in protein, you're chewing your meat. Nothing happens in the mouth. So in the mouth, protein digestion is absent. Okay, nothing happens there. So the next point is the stomach. This is where protein digestion begins. So which enzyme acts in the stomach to digest protein? It's called what? Pepsin. Which starts as pepsinogen. Okay? So the acid, the hydrochloric acid that is released in the stomach is what activates this pepsinogen and it becomes pepsin. So pepsin is a special protease. So the enzymes generally are called proteases. Proteases. Those are protein digesting enzymes. So it's a special protease in the sense that it functions only in a very acidic medium. So a pH that is from 5 and above. It inactivates, and in fact, it irreversibly denatures this protein. Okay? So that's one special thing about protein, pepsin. Another special thing about pepsin is that pepsin has the highest capability to digest, to act on collagen. And collagen is a protein in meat with these tough connective tissues that binds the meat, meat together. It helps to break it down. It's the only one. The 
pancreatic proteases, they don't have much of that capability. So it makes it easier because it has broken down what is binding the, the, the meat or the fish together. It's fairly neat. Okay? And it now gives way, room for others to act. So it makes it easier. But even if pepsin is not present, protein digestion can still go on where it just facilitates, it just helps, makes it easier. Okay, so another special thing about pepsin is that it breaks down proteins into intermediates known as proteoses. Proteoses, small peptides, and peptones. Okay, these are the breakdown products of the action of pepsin on proteins. So that's all basically what you need to know. So then the food, the protein moves into the small intestine and bicarbonates neutralizes the acid and inactivates pepsin. Pepsin stops working. So the next port of call, small intestine so that's in small intestine in duodenum from that ampulla of vata pancreatic juice and enzymes is secreted in abundance so you have pancreatic pancreatic proteases we're going to list them and what they do Okay, you always need to know the name of the enzyme. So, number one, you have trypsin. You also have chymotrypsin. These two are known as endopeptidases. Okay, then you have another one, elastase. Okay, and another one, carboxypeptidases, which is into A, carboxypeptidases A and B. Carboxypeptidases. Okay, so these two elastase and carboxypeptidases are known as exopeptidases. All right, so you all know the process that trypsin is what initiates the whole process in the intestine. How? Because trypsin, they are all secreted in their inactive form. Unlike amylases for carbohydrates, they are secreted in the active form. And it's done like that because the body, the substance of the body itself is made up of protein. So if this enzyme that digests protein comes out anyhow, even in the process of coming out, it will start digesting itself. It will start digesting the pancreas itself that secretes it. So they always come out in inactive form. So the inactive form of this is pepsinogen, chymotrypsinogen, proelastase, procarboxypeptidase. That's how they come. So trypsin, as it comes out into the intestine, it is now activated by an enzyme called enterokinase. Enterokinase is an enzyme that is secreted from the enterocytes. That's why it's called enterokinase, also called enteropeptidase. So it activates trypsinogen and converts it to trypsin. So trypsin itself now goes back and now activates the rest, okay, when they are already in the lumen. So that what happens. So endopeptidase is just talking about the fact that it breaks down the, the inner peptide linkages, this one, the external outer peptide, 
Okay, that's you don't need to bother yourself about that, but just know that. So what happens is that this two, trypsin and chymotrypsin, they break down proteins to small polypeptides. To small polypeptides. Then these two, the exopeptidases, now break it down to amino acids, then dipeptides and tripeptides. Okay? So that's what happens. So the, these ones don't break it down to this level. Just they stop at small polypeptides. Protein, small polypeptide. Then this one comes and breaks it down further to release the amino acids from inside. And also, this is dipeptide, meaning two amino acids, tripeptide, three amino acids. What is unique about protein digestion and absorption, we'll talk about it later, is that these dipeptide and tripeptides can actually be absorbed unlike the carbohydrates that is only mono the smallest unit can be absorbed okay so when it does this comes to this level especially in the jejunum the digestive process is now complete so also note something important too just like the carbohydrates the enterocytes that's the brush border they have enzymes too that digest proteins the same they are called peptidases they also break it down to amino acids okay they break down the peptide different kinds of peptide like peptide tripeptide small polypeptide they break them down to amino acids okay then it is now complete and absorption can take place so we're going to now talk about the special unique features it's a little different from that of carbohydrate. They are still similar, but there's some differences. We're going to talk about the absorption of proteins after this break. Right, welcome back. So absorption of proteins. Proteins, they are very special in the way they are absorbed in the sense that you know, unlike the carbohydrates, they are absorbed in the smallest unit, which is the monosaccharide. So the smallest unit of protein is amino acids. Okay? But proteins are absorbed not only as amino acids. They are also absorbed as dipeptides. And try peptides very very rarely they can be absorbed as whole proteins but it can cause problems in the body because the body recognizes it as a foreign protein you know, when you ingest the protein that you ingest is foreign from animals or from plants and so on so if you ingest it whole like that without breaking it down the body will the immune system will react so that's what happens only this three forms are they can they be absorbed no just a quick one remember that absorption is true transport mechanism so let's take this this is the luminal side the lumen okay of the intestine and this is the blood side where you have the capillary okay so this is the basolateral membrane basolateral membrane this is the luminal membrane also known as apical membrane right so what happens is that these amino acid dipeptides they are transported through this membrane into the cell but differently there's a slight difference now their transport process is similar to that of carbohydrates in the sense that they are transported through secondary active transport okay from this membrane into this one but when they are moving from inside across the basolateral membrane it's 
facilitated diffusion. But there's a difference between how amino acids cross and how dipeptides and tripeptides cross. And the difference is the type of carrier protein. Okay? So now, while amino acids, they cross through sodium, they are, they are coupled with sodium, okay? Sodium and amino acid transport mechanism. The dipeptides and tripeptides, they are coupled with hydrogen, okay? So hydrogen as it's coming in, they are coupled with it and they cross through this place, through secondary artery. And the secondary artery travels simply because it's crossing from where it is lower to where it is higher. They are higher inside the cell already, but it's now crossing from lower to higher. Okay? But these two, they cross coupled with hydrogen, with hydrogen. Why this one is crosses this membrane coupled with what? Sodium. Okay? So, but when they are crossing this other membrane, it is fast. They don't need to be coupled with anything. They cross through facilitated diffusion because it's moving from higher to lower. And from here to inside the capillaries, it is bulk flow. But there's something else you need to know that when these dipeptides and tripeptides, they enter into the cytosol, so something happens. There's what we call cytoplasmic peptidases. So why they cross as dipeptides and tripeptides, the cytoplasmic peptidases now break them down into amino acids. Another interesting fact I need to know about protein digestion is that the dipeptides and tripeptides, they actually cross faster when they're coming in from here. It's strange. They're supposed to think that, oh, the amino acids, since they are smaller, simpler, they should cross faster. But they actually cross faster, dipeptides. So more dipeptides and tripeptides are absorbed than amino acids at this level. But when they enter here, they are broken down and everything is now amino acids when crossing the biosolateral membrane. Okay? So the, the, the transport proteins for the amino acids, they are into, they are, the carrier proteins, they are different. It's not the same type of carrier protein because you have four basic types of amino acids. You have the amino amino acids. You have the basic amino acid, you have the neutral amino acid, and you have the acid amino acid. So each of these four different types, they use their own different type of carrier protein. Okay? But all of them, most of them, they depend on sodium, to be coupled to sodium. Then the tripeptides depend on hydrogen. So that is basically what you need to know, the absorption of proteins, okay? It's very easy to understand. So I've written a book on gastrointestinal physiology broken down for you. So it's important for further reading. A lot of these things are there in a little more detail, okay? So you can check the soft copy. The link is there for the soft copy. It takes you to Kada Books where you can download it for just a little token. And also other books in physiology I've written also, seven of them at the time of this shooting. You can also download them for further reading. Easy to understand, okay? Then next, we also have our website. You can visit our website so you can know more about what we do to make the learning of physiology easy, exciting, and effective. So see you in the next video.